Hey guys, and welcome to another JavaScript challenge video. In this challenge, we'll create a function that takes a string as an argument and determines whether string is a palindrome. Essentially, string is the same forward and backward. If it is, function will return true. If it's not, we will return false. In order to make it more interesting, string might contain symbols and punctuation, as well as string will be a sentence, not a one word like we had in our previous challenge. As always, if you would like to work yourself and compare the results, pause the video and resume when you're done. So I have my function. Awesome. I named my function check palindrome, but obviously you can call this however you'd like. And first and foremost, we're going to look at the easier example where we will have a sentence. However, there will be no punctuation or symbols. So in this case, our goal should be getting rid of the white space, then obviously create it to lowercase and then reverse it. So first and foremost, I guess I would want to set it up to be a lowercase. So I'm just going to say string and we can use a to lowercase method that we can have on a string. That would be our first step. And next, why don't we create two console logs? console log and first we're going to be console logging the variable by the name of first but in order to console log it we first would need to create it so i'm going to say all right so this is going to be my first variable and then for that i will going to use the string that i currently have i would want to split it however like i said i would want to get rid of all the white spaces so that's the reason as we're using the split method we're going to make sure that we have a space here in between the quotation marks. So that means that we're splitting up everywhere where we see the white space. That would be the first step. And next one, I would want to join it. But in this case, I'm not going to join back in the white space. I'm just going to say that join whatever values you had in that array. So this is going to be my resulting string that I'm getting back after these functions. Okay. Now, next one is working with a second string. Now, what's the reason for the second variable? Well, very simply, I would want to use the string that I have right now in the first, and I would like to reverse it. Now, that would be, again, very easy. Or I'm going to say let second will be the first that I have, the first variable. Then again, we're going to use the split. However, in this case, I do want to split on each and every character. I do want to run reverse like so that would be the method that i can have on the array and last but not least again we're going to use the join but we're going to join on each and every character now if we're going to console log it so let's run again console log and let's see what we're going to have with the second one and the way i'm checking everything should be exactly the same so this means that this sentence is in fact a palindrome so what we can do here is we can say okay if first is equal to second, then we should obviously either return true or false. And everything is working really well. However, why don't we spice this thing up? And in this case, I will going to start passing a symbols as well as the punctuation. And notice something interesting. Even though this sentence is in fact a palindrome, I'm getting a false because what I'm seeing here is that these punctuations as well as the symbols are messing up my logic currently. Now, the last one is obviously not a palindrome. This is the reason why I'm getting false. And this is how it should be happening. So what we can do? Well, first and foremost, I would want to delete this because again, this would be the easier case scenario. If you need to write it down, please do it. So because I don't want to clog up my screen. So what I will going to do right now is just delete everything that we had. And we're going to start from the scratch. And in this case, we will going to be also checking for the symbols as well as the punctuation. Okay. Now, first and foremost, I would want to again create a new variable and I'm just going to call this temp string. And in this case, I'm going to say string, but we will not use join yet. Instead, we're going to use match. Now, the reason why we're using match because I would want to use a rejects since I'm dealing with a text here. And in order to get rid of this punctuation, as well as get rid of the symbols, it would make sense if I would use the rejects. Now, what happens with match method, it will extract whatever we tell it to. So when I write match, 
now in the match, I can write my rejects. And within the rejects, I would want to say, well, what exactly I would want over here? Well, first and foremost, I would want to get all the characters here. Now, in order to see what is happening again, the best case scenario would be temp string, just so we can see what we're getting back. So first and foremost, I'm going to say that I would be looking for all the characters from A to Z. Or in this case, this is just looking for the first one because it's saying, OK, so whatever you had an in index one. But obviously, we would want to get all the characters. We would want all the characters, but we wouldn't want the symbols or the punctuation. So in order to do that, we can pass here two flags. We can first of all say I that's going to be a flag that ignores the casing, whether that's camel case or uppercase or lowercase. And then I can just say that I would want to match all the instances that I had for the letters from A to Z. And that's the reason why we're using the global flag. Now, I also would want to have a plus flag here. Now, what this is doing, notice that this is just returning me the repetitions. So instead of just returning the single letters, in this case, this returns the letters that were repeated. Now, we can also do the same thing if we're looking for the numbers. I could say 0 to 9 as well, just in case if we're looking for the number. That would be my first setup where I'm just getting my temporary string. Now, next one, again, I would like to do the same thing that we did before, where I would want to use a second variable where we split the one that we have, our temp string, as well as we reverse it. Now, before we do that, I do want to run two more methods. First and foremost, I would want to join the array that I had. Notice this is exactly what's happening. And last but not least, again, we need to use a two lower case. And what will happen is that I'm getting back my string that I was already talking about. All right. Now, this will be the first. step. Now, the second one is, like I said, we were just going to create a second variable or we can test with the same variable that I would want. But I would want to, again, run split. So I would want to split up the string that I have, reverse it, and then run join. Now, just to show you that obviously what is happening, I think I will going to go with the second variable here. And by the way, you know what? This is returning right now, first and second. Why don't we return undefined for the moment? And before we do anything, why do we just console log second? And for the second one, like I said, we are going to use the temp string that we already had. We will going to use the split method. I'm just going to make sure that in this case, I will going to split up on each and every character. We will going to reverse it like so. And then we're going to join back up everything on each and every character. Now, in this case, notice what happens since we use that match method that we are having on a string and we extracted only the numbers as well as the letters. Plus, we made sure that we ignored the camel casing. We ignored anything that was with a symbol or a punctuation. This was the result. And again, the same thing we're doing right now with the second variable, which we did already previously, where we just again split it up, reverse it as well as join it back together. Now, last one will be just comparing them so I can get rid of this. And I can say if time string time string is equal to second, then we're going to be returning the true. Otherwise, we're going to be returning the false. So again, this challenge is mostly focused on using the rejects and just making sure that we apply it the correct way.